الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهد الله انه لا اله الا هو والملائكه واولو العلم واولو العلم قائما بالقسط لا اله الا هو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the Anbiya alayhim wa salatu wa salam and every Prophet of Allah when he approached people the first message was Ya ayyuhal nas qulu la ilaha illallah or people say la ilaha illallah that was the message of all the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam standing from Adam alayhi wa salatu wa salam to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa salam Ya ayyuhu al-nas qulu la ilaha illallah O people, say la ilaha illallah Sayyidina Musa alayhi wa salatu wa salam requested Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala for a special dhikr through which he can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say la ilaha illallah. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam said, Ya Rasulullah, kulla nasi yaqulu dhalik. Everyone says this. Everyone says la ilaha illallah. Inna ma uridu dhikran takhussunu bih. I want a dhikr that would be specific to me, Ya Allah. Teach me something special. Now pay attention here. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam is Kalimullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that special title that he talked to. And then he's one of Ulul Azmi min al Rusul. There are five of them out of all the Anbiya. If you want to select five that will be of the highest level, Ulul Azmi min al Rusul. <coughs> One of them is Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, the amount of knowledge and the recognition of Rabbul Alameen that he had is something we cannot even imagine how close he was to Rabbul Alameen with his ma'rifah and with his knowledge of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he knows if I want to ask something of the highest level, this is where we need to understand. If I need to ask of something of the highest level, then I need to ask some form of dhikr. Because there is nothing greater than that. Think about it for a minute. What can we ask for that will be greater than that? So Musa alayhi knows this will be one of the greatest things and this will be the greatest form of thing that I can ask. I need to ask for a dhikr. So he says, Ya Allah, I will do the dhikr, but I need a very special form of dhikr that you will teach me, especially that will be between you and me and you, Ya Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, keep on saying, La ilaha illallah, recite La ilaha illallah. 
So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ya Rabbul Ya Rabbul Ya Rabbul Alameen, I need something specific to me because that is something everyone decides. So there's nothing special about me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لو أن السماوات السبع والأرضين وضعنا في كفك If you take all seven hills and all the earth and you place them on one side of the scale ووضعت لا إله إلا الله في كفك and you place لا إله إلا الله on the other side of the scale لرجحت بهن لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله will overweight all of that Imam Ahmad rahimahullah and Imam Tabrani and others have narrated that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and this is this hadith is narrated with authentic Islam when Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was on his deathbed he called his sons in one narration says Da'a ibn Nuh and in another narration Da'a ibn Nuh he called both of his sons and he said to his sons I want to make my last will to you now. So I want you to pay attention and take it seriously. This will be my last will to you before I die. And then he started making his last will. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He told them, Amurukum bi ithlain wa anhaakum an ithlain. I ask you to do two things and refrain from two things. آمُرُكُمْ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The first thing I ask you to do is keep on reciting لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ all the time. Recite, keep on reciting لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And here we need to, before we continue, we need to ask ourselves this form of dhikr of لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ How much do we recite this? For some reason for many people, this is not even considered a form of dhikr anymore. And when Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, he must be reciting Torah. He's reciting Torah and he's doing a lot of dua. He's doing a lot of dhikr. His dua was such that when Bani Israel, after all of their fasad and all the disobedience, when they see the signs of adab, they would go to Musa alayhi salam and ask him to make dua. Not only then, they were still believers. Even when he was in Musa, in Egypt, Fir'aun and his people, when they would see the signs of Adab, they would go to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, Udhu lana rabbaka bima ahida inna, layin kashafta anna rizal anu minan laka wa lana yuslanna ma'aka bani Israel. Pray to Allah, pray to Allah according to what he has taught you, because your du'as are accepted. Musa is making dua. He's doing all that has gone. He's doing the prayer according to how Allah has told him. He's reciting the Torah. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him to keep on reciting La ilaha illallah. So this is not only for non-Muslims to recite. This is only, not only for us to teach the non-Muslims say La ilaha illallah. You know, when we do something when we are into something, when we are connected to it, then when you talk to people about it, people see it on us. People get impressed with your feelings that is behind it, not just your words. This is what's going to get to people. It's how you're saying it. When we are telling someone to recite La ilaha illallah, imagine if in return that person will ask us, how much do you recite La ilaha illallah? I recited it when Someday, it's a reality. Now, if we are not saying it, we are not reciting it, how are we going to spread it? How are people going to take it from us? How many people are accepting Islam on our hands? Don't we see that this could be one of the reasons that this la ilaha illallah is not even in our life? How could we spread it out? How could people take it from us? When we ourselves are not into it, it's not just a word to be recited when a person is ready to accept Islam. That shows the power of the word. That shows the power of the kalima. 
That when a person is accepting Islam, he could be 70 years old, who have committed all kinds of sins, crimes, get the worst sinner in the world, get the worst person you can imagine in the world. And that person is away from Iman. And tell that person to recite La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Write if he would believe in it, recite it If he would be serious about reciting it All the sins he has committed All of them are washed away, they are all clean This person is just like a newborn baby This is the power of it So if that person is having so much power of it How much it will be on a person who already believes in it so it's for all of us. It's something we need to really make it part of our life. Keep on reciting and reciting and reciting this. If we are into it, inshallah, Allah will spread it through us. People will have the effect of it when we say it. But if it is not in our life either, then we tell someone, brother, recite la ilaha illallah. He's going to laugh at us. It's not because he knows we don't recite, but the effect is not there for sure. It surprises us sometimes that when you see, read the history of Islam, there are people who would just, in the midst of non-Muslims, they are not giving no lecture, no da'wah, just the person happened to be there and he said, La ilaha illallah, and everyone else will stand reciting La ilaha illallah. It was part of their life. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling the Sahaba to be in the company of the good people and pious people and they said, what's the sign ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الَّذِينَ إِذَا رُؤُوا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ They are the ones who when you see them, you start doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They won't say a word. You just see them. They will start reciting the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone will start doing the dhikr of Allah. Just by looking at it. This is how dhikr is part of their life. And we read the history of Islam. It's not one or two people. Believe me, it's not even a few hundred people. It's by thousands of those people throughout the history. That when people used to look at them, they used to start reciting the dhikr. Just by looking at them. There are people who by just looking at them, 70,000 people in one trip will accept Islam. Just by looking at them. And here we are trying to talk to people, convince people. We are doing that in all different ways. No effect. The effect comes from there. When we are connected to it, the effect will be there. When we want our children to accept their wives. We will ask someone who can really talk to them about this topic, this subject. You want him to become a doctor. So you tell one of the doctors in the community, talk to my son about it. Talk to my son about it. Tell him how good is this field. So he may say, you know, why don't you talk to him? You are the father. Yeah, but you know, it's your field. You can explain to him better. This is exactly what being in it means. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Imagine what would be the children of Nuh alayhi salam, the children of the Prophet of Allah, such a great Prophet of Allah. So he's making last will to his children. It's not about my homes, I have these many homes and this much in the account. No, I'm asking you to do two things. One is la ilaha illallah. And he said the same thing. He said the power of La ilaha illallah is such that if you place all seven heavens وعامرهم, all the ones that are in these seven heavens and all the things that are in the, uh, on this earth if you put all of it together and place it on one side of the scale on the other side of the scale is only La ilaha illallah the rajahat bihinna La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah will overweigh all of those things. It's heavier than all the, all the heavens and the earth. How heavy it would be, how much power it would have for changing our lives. Have our children get used to La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. 
Allah, when they're going to bed, La ilaha illallah, when they're not falling asleep, La ilaha illallah, when they get hurt, they're crying, keep on reciting, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. It's at all times. It's a habit to be done. And number two, he said, and keep on reciting, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. These are the wills that he's making. This is the will of a, of, of a prophet of Allah. That keep on reciting, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Because he said, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. What is Subhanallah wa bihamdi? فَإِنَّهَا صَلَاةُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ This is what Nuh said. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrating it. Means he's approving it too. And he's telling us the same thing. He said, إِنَّهَا صَلَاةُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Subhanallah wa bihamdi is the prayer of everything in this universe. Everything in this universe, praise Allah through subhanallah wa bihamdi. And if we go through the hadith that talk about just subhanallah wa bihamdi, ayat of the Quran that talk about subhanallah wa bihamdi, I'm sure we can understand. We need days and days to just see the ayat in the hadith that talk about the benefit and the worship of subhanallah wa bihamdi. This is one thing. He said, فَإِنَّهَا صَلَاةُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ the second thing, amazing. وَبِهَا يُرْزَقُ الْخَلْقِ Through subhanallah wa bihamdi, Allah keeps the doors of the risk open for the person. How much we are struggling for that? Believe me, try it. Try it. Especially try it. When you feel that I'm in a difficult situation, have everyone in the family recite subhanallah wa bihamdi. People tried it. We tried it. You see how Allah will just open the doors from ways you cannot even imagine. Subhanallah. And the two things, one hak and I think. And I start and I ask you to ask, uh, I ask you to refrain from two things. Number one, and shirk. Stay away from shirk. Stay far from shirk. And unfortunately, it's just getting into us. In all different ways. Even watching, sitting at home, watching people doing shirk on the screens in front of us, and everyone is enjoying the scene that's happening. Shirk is going right in front of our own eyes, and parents and children are both are enjoying the scene. On that kind of shirk, I ask you to refrain from shirk. Number two, well, the camera, subhanAllah, the next to shirk. Is I asked you to stay away from arrogance. Destroyed us and destroyed the nations before us. And the first, the first person that went away from the ibadah of Allah Iblis. Abba was takba. Refused to do the sujood. Why? I'm better than him. You know what ibad means? Ibad is not atidah. It's not he has an excuse. Is I'm not doing it. Regardless of what you tell me, I'm not doing it. This is what ibad means. It's just like sometimes you see children getting stubborn and you tell them, you know, because of it, I don't do it. That's it. This is exactly what ibad is. He's in front, he's standing before Rabbul Alameen and saying, I'm not doing it. That's it. Tell me whatever you want to tell me, I'm not doing it. Why? Allah said the reason was istakbara, because of this arrogance. May Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us also tawfiq to practice upon these wasaya of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. We are also the children of Anbiya. The followers of Anbiya are the children of Anbiya. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدُ الْأَبَا أَحَدٍ مَا رِجَالِكُمْ مُلَاكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمُ النَّبِيِينَ He is not a father of any man, but he is the father of the Ummah. And his wazwaji ummahatuhu. His wives are the mothers of the Ummah. إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ كَالْوَالِدِ وَعَلِّمُكُمْ he says in the hadith in Surah Al-Tirmiz, I'm like a father to you, I teach you everything. So he's a father to us. Anbiya are our father. We take these advice of these words, Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, and apply them to our lives also. La ilaha illallah, subhanallah wa bihamdi, staying away from everything that will bring shirk and kufr towards us, and keeping ourselves away from all kind of arrogance and attitude that will show any kind of arrogance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq.